I just shared it. And here we are. All right. Um, let me. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome back. We are. I am Diane. Nita, and I'm Bruce. And Bruce is joining me tonight. Thank goodness. It was a little nerve wracking being all alone last Thursday. Um, this series is going to be regularly every week on Thursday nights. Uh, but because we have a client party tomorrow night, Thursday night, we had to move this week's to tonight. So um, if we don't get the, if anyone misses it, it's okay. I think it'll be recorded on our page um, and it'll stay up there if you miss anything. So Bruce, thanks for joining me. Um, the way we work, so this is a seller series. We're, we're giving information about what's going on with sellers in the market right now. I know you've probably heard of buyer presentations and first time home buyer programs. But what we're finding now is that sellers um, who, who have owned their home for a really long time, they have a lot of questions. They haven't done it before. And we thought we would try to provide some value and just kind of talk about the market from a seller's perspective. And Bruce, um, who ha is dealing mostly with buyers, um, tonight's going to provide some color on what buyers look for um, when they go and visit homes for sale and what might turn them off, what might make them bid over asking price. Um, and this is going to, in my opinion, provide a lot of value um, for when you are getting ready to sell and things like that. Um, when we, um, there was a slide that I put up last time. Let me see if I can get that on. Um, illustrating the, um, let me hit my share screen. I'm still, um, oh, I am. I think I am sharing. I think I just need to do that, right? There we go. Um, and I can do this right here. Um, Bruce, you can see that slide? I can. Yeah. So this, a very provocative slide showing um, what has been going on in the market. Months inventory of homes for sale. That neutral market right in the middle is when we have six to seven months of inventory. And as you can see in the green, we've been in a seller's market for quite some time now. Um, and this has been part of the reason that prices are going up, um, that buyers are getting into bidding wars. There's just no inventory. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that and um, what it means and how just because it's a seller's market, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, let me see if I can, here we go again. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can just throw a sign in your front yard and expect to get top dollar for your house. Um, and so we're going to talk about the three biggest mistakes that sellers make currently in the market. Um, we tried to get to this last Thursday, but we had a lot of people on actually asking lots of questions. And I didn't even get to the three biggest mistakes that sellers make. So let's get right into it. OK, so the first mistake that sellers make in this market is overpricing. Um, a lot of sellers, the market right now, it's very unusual. It's changing, I would say, almost every two weeks. And Bruce, I think you can speak to this as well, um, being out there with buyers. You know, you've been in situations, I would imagine, where you've had put an offer in and you get it. You're, you're the only offer versus a few months ago, you were putting in an offer and there were like 12. We, right? we, we've definitely hit a bit of a slow um, yeah. in the fact that, you know, before in that March time frame, March, April, um, if you equated that to a quote unquote normal year, that's the spring market. It just happened to be that this spring market was crazy and there were so many offers made per house. We're in a bit of a slower time now because those that wanted to change for school districts, et cetera, have probably settled in. But every year around this time, we still see that uptick in September of what I consider kind of musical chairs the music stopped. There are a lot of buyers left still looking for houses. Yep. There are deals that they want to make to buy houses. There's still plenty of people out there looking. Yeah. 
Yep. So back to those three biggest mistakes. Um, and that first one that you just talked about, overpricing your home based on what your neighbor's house sold for. That is the biggest mistake, number one. When I meet with a seller and they say to me, well, I want a million dollars because this guy over here just got a million dollars and my house is way better than his house. Well, you know what? Maybe that would have been the case if you went on the same week, right, of that particular house. But as we watch the market, what can happen is sometimes things like that, they're just anomalies, right? It's just a, a, right now we are seeing some houses priced. I mean, I just had it. We had a listing. We listed it for $8.99. We had 10 offers and it did, in fact, go over a million dollars. I would argue that if that same house were put on the market today, there would have been a very different result in, 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 even in um, if everything else was the same, right? If the, my marketing was the same, photographs were the same, everything was the same except the timing, okay? Um, and that's how quickly things are changing. So you really have to, you can't base the present and pricing your house on what happened in the past, especially in a market like this, which is changing literally week to week. Um, inventory has gone up considerably. I just grabbed these prices. Kaylin, thank you so much. And Stuart, thank you for tuning in. And oh, Nancy Safford is on board here tonight. Nancy, thank you for watching. You're going to, you're going to love mistake number two that sellers make. So stay tuned for mistake number two. Talking about inventory. Okay. And how the market is changing. Just a quick comparison. I don't have a slide, unfortunately, to show this. But between February and July, let's look at some numbers. I'm going to go uber local. We live in Sharon, but I'll also go a little bit further out to Norfolk County, right, which encompasses many towns surrounding Sharon. In February, 399 listings went on the market, new listings. Compared to July, just last month, 631 new listings came on the market. So even though the slide I just showed shows that we're still in a seller's market, we are still, we're now experiencing way more inventory starting to come on, okay? So it's different. Still a seller's market, but a lot more coming on. Homes that got offers in February, 433 in Norfolk County, 547 in Norfolk County in July. And let me just do that uber local number. In Sharon, in February, we had 16 new listings. And in July, we had 25. Not quite double, but it, it's getting there. Um, and I would argue that August, we're seeing even, we're going to see that number increase even higher. Um, and check, this is amazing. The amount of sold, um, I have to laugh, I have a puppy. So if you hear this crazy noise in the background, he's eating his water dish. So um, you'll excuse the, the, the puppy shenanigans going on. Um, the sold houses in Norfolk County in February were 294. In July, 739 homes sold. Crazy. Um, so that's what we're seeing changing in inventory. And we have, you as a seller, have to be really cognizant of that and talk to a professional in your market so that you know what's going on and you don't make that mistake of overpricing. Buyers today are super savvy. And because they're really savvy, they are looking at Zestimates, which, yes, they're very wrong many times. However, they're online. They're looking at recent sales. They're looking at houses around the neighborhood that have just sold. And if you overprice your house, buyers are going to walk away. They're not, they know. They know the market very well. They're more educated than any other generation we've had when it comes to buying because of all the data that's online. So if you do overprice that home, they're going to know, they're going to wait, you're going to be on the market longer. The frenzy and the energy we try to create with marketing coming out of the gate is going to be lost. And as I tell sellers all the time, the real estate agent you hire does not price your house. The market prices your house. If, I, if your house is truly at market value and worth $800,000 and I put it on the market for $600,000 because I'm a total dope and have no idea what the market's doing, it's not going to sell for $600,000. So that's where, but, but if you overprice it, you're not going to get the eyeballs on it. So I just, that's mistake number one. All right, Nancy, I hope you're listening. 
Um, Nancy is my go-to stager and knows how to make things beautiful. And she said something recently. If you want to type it in the comments, Nancy, you said something about paint. Um, and it, it was a great line, and I don't remember it. So if you want to type it in the comments, I'll, I'll bring it up if I even know how to do that. So I can try. Um, all right. So mistake number two is choosing not to declutter and to de-decorate and to present your home in the best light. That is biggest mistake number two. Again, just because it's a hot market doesn't mean that you can not present your property as, as, as best as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Again, one thing, in addition to buyers having a lot of knowledge, they do lack one thing. They lack imagination. There we go. There we go. Here it is. Let me see if I can bring this comment up on the screen. Nancy says, Diane and Bruce, I tell my clients paint is money in a can. I love that line. How true is that? All right. There's no, there's no quicker fix than painting a house that's either dark or you, you might need not even think that it, it's shabby looking until you actually get that coat of paint on and then you realize, wow, it really did look a little dingy, didn't it? Um, so paint does wonders. But decluttering, we all live very differently than we sell, okay? Um, if I needed to put my house on the market right now, trust me, I, 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 I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't do a lot of different things to my house. We have to take away the things that are beautiful to us, that are important to us, that are personal to us, get them away. Um, we, we recently um, saw a house with gorgeous, gorgeous, very, very expensive furniture, but it was big and it was heavy and it was dark. And if we can lighten up a room, I recently, we had it with Nancy, you and I worked on a project where we staged a home. The first thing we did was we removed heavy curtains, right? heavy drapery. We also removed the carpeting where there was gorgeous hardwood flooring underneath. Um, and we presented this house and the house, I would argue, it's not necessarily people will say, well, my house will sell if I don't. It, it, it's such a great market. You know, anyone, someone's going to come in and buy the house. And you know what? You're probably right. They will. But you will you will leave money on the table. And that is the the, you know, what do sellers want the most? You want the most money in your pocket. You want to net the most money and walk away from the deal with the most money. And you're going to leave money on the table with the bottom line if you don't present the product properly, right? Same with like if you go to sell your car. If I go to sell a car and I've got my, you know, my wrappers from my power bars and my cans of soda and dog toys everywhere and it's dirty, no one's going to offer me top dollar for that car. But if I get it detailed and it's beautiful and it's shiny and it looks completely well-maintained and like I never had a pet in that car ever, I'm going to get a better price for it. It's the same thing with your house. So don't ever be insulted when someone tells you, get rid of this, get rid of that. It's not about your taste. It's about decluttering. De-decorating is what I like to call it so that your house appeals to the most amount of buyers. Bruce, what do you have to say about that? I've been talking a long time. Tell me about your buyers. I, I I am noticing that buyers need a little nudge in the imagination realm. Um, I try and nudge them myself, but they need to be able to walk into a house and see kind of that blank slate, that empty canvas. And when we walk into a house that Nancy has staged for you, you can see that there's space in the room. You can see that the walls are neutral colors. You can, you can envision yourself living there. When we walk into a house that's dark and over cluttered, they get turned off a bit by it. Yep, yep. Um, there's, there's also, I, I, would, I would say that one thing we've learned too is things like um, um, Buyers don't know how much things cost to fix. Very true. Okay. So we, we, we're so close to it because we're all in the business. They don't realize that, you know, to remove carpeting that's covering hardwood floors does not cost a lot of money. But if you walk in, if they walk into a house and there's wall to wall carpeting everywhere and it's old wall to wall carpeting, they don't, no buyer has ever walked into a house and said, 
Is there hardwood flooring under that hideous rug? <gasps> Fantastic. I love it. They don't. All they do is they see the carpeting and they go, oh, this carpeting. Yeah, we don't like carpeting. And they don't, they don't want that project, right? They think it's a big project. So for our sellers to endure the inconvenience of getting their house ready, now they risk so much less because that buyer is now going to come into their house and go, oh my God, look at these gorgeous hardwood floors. This is amazing. Um, so anyway, so that, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so that is biggest mistake number two. Okay. Anyone want to guess in mistake number three? All right. So mistake number three is listing your home with an inexperienced agent, family member, or friend. Um, I would argue that everyone, everyone knows a real estate agent. The problem is that you want to find a real estate agent who's in your market. And this isn't a pitch for me because we don't list homes everywhere. We know our market and we're really good at our market. But you need to, this is your biggest asset. And I can tell you stories, many stories, where agents have, I'm going to, I'm going to introduce somebody to the camera because he's driving me crazy. All right, everyone say hi to Rocky. Rocky, take a look. All right, this is Rocky. Um, he's scratching at something. But the biggest that the you can't you can't um, as they say get the toothpaste back in the tube, and that's how I feel about when people sometimes list with somebody who's inexperienced. They don't know the market. Do your research because if you list with somebody, the cat's out of the bag. Right. Once that house goes on the market, either at the wrong price or not presented properly, and you have to go off the market and then back on the market, there's something called market aging. Right. And you again, you miss that excitement. You miss all of that. And it really affects the value of your home and what you're going to put in your pocket. So don't make that mistake. And there's lots of ways that you can get out of doing something like that. We have helped people. We've been told by people. Oh, but my sister's a realtor, but this one's a realtor. And there's there's all kinds of techniques and tools, you know, to say, you know, there we can give a referral fee to somebody is what we've done in the past. We can have a conversation. We can co-list. There's a lot of things you can do to sort of finesse the, um, um, the, 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 so you don't insult anybody, right? So that you you save take the sting out of it. And yeah, what was that, Bruce? You take the sting out. Yeah, of it. you take the sting out of it. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, yeah, there you go. Or no agent at all. Yeah, Stu 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 mentioned not using an agent at all, and we can tell you. Let me tell you. So we'll tell you a few stories about sellers that don't use agents. As a buyer agent, and I represent buyers as well as Bruce does. <clears throat> Come here. Come here. <laughs> this is so challenging. The, the seller that doesn't use an agent is my best friend. Because it. guess what? Our buyers are going to get such a great deal. Um, there is there, there's no reason. There is no reason for a, a seller to not use an agent. Because again, buyers are savvy. They're going to lowball you because you don't use an agent. They're going to get away with trying to negotiate. There's no one to put the deal together. There's no one to keep it together. And we can tell you lots of stories about how our buyers made out because of a for sale by owner. Um, and also, I don't know, Bruce, you you did one recently. And you know, it, listen, at the end of the day, that we have to look out for who we look out for, right? Well, as a as a seller, if if the concern is that you you have to pay a fee to an agent in order to list your house, and you think that you're going to do better on your own and not pay the fee, statistically speaking, an agent's going to get you her fee plus more, and you would not have gotten lowballed by a savvy buyer agent. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, the whole idea is that the the the, the uh, there, there's this tons and tons of statistics out there 
um, that show that when you do use a real estate agent, you do actually net much more money in your pocket um, than the fee. So there you have it on that. So I think I just went through the top three biggest mistakes that sellers make. I'm sure there are some more. Um, um, Nancy commented, because we're selling the house, we're not selling what's in it. That is so true, Nancy. And so we need to show off the house, right? We don't want to see your grandmother's couch or your grandmother's bedroom set because that's all that people are going to see. So we need to make it so pretty that people can see their own stuff, even if their own stuff might be ugly too. <laughs> they don't know that yet. They just are looking at this beautiful, we wanna show off the floors and the walls and the high ceilings and the light. And I, I, and it's like your own house. When your house is clean. You don't notice anything that is, if your wind, let's, here's a great example. If my windows are dirty in my house, I look out my window and I see a dirty window. But when your windows are clean, you may not comment, oh my goodness, the windows in this house are so clean. You're just gonna comment that, oh my gosh, the room is so bright. I can see it in the backyard. Same with chipped paint along thresholds and doorways and baseboard trim that the dog scratched up or the kids scratched up. If it's there, you notice it. But when it's not there, you don't notice it. And that's the money in the bank right there. It's almost the things that people don't notice that are the, the things that are most important. Um, all right, what else we have going on here tonight? Um, so we talked about, um, there were a few other questions. We had one question about um, last week that I didn't get to, and that was, did, did we miss the market if we didn't list our house back in February and March? The answer is a resounding no. This is going to be, a seller's market for probably at, at least another couple of years. We are going to start seeing interest rates come up, but they're still historically low. Let me see if I can find that slide regarding um, regarding the, um, the the interest rate. Let me see if I can share the screen. Um, and let's see. Here we go. All right. I mean, this is just unbelievable, right? Hold on. There we go. 2021 mortgage rates. They're still hovering, and I believe they just had a little bit of a of a dip even. In July, they were 2.98%. For that's for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. So the principal and interest on that's just an average loan size, 480,000, right? $2,018. Look what happens to buyers buying power when their interest rate were, if the interest rate were to go up, right? And we just show a little quick illustration is if the, at that same, at that same loan amount, if the mortgage rate was 4% and if the interest rate was 5%, right? I mean, the difference between 2.65 and 5% is what it's like six hundred dollars a month so people's buying power buyers buying power goes down as soon as the rates start going up and that does have an effect on prices so if you if there are if you are if you are a buyer out there um or you're an agent and you are working with buyers now is the time to tell those buyers to get off the fence we just showed you that that the 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 um the market is the um the inventory is going up so it's a great time those disgruntled buyers that like left the market because they were getting you know beat up and they weren't getting their offers accepted and they couldn't compete because maybe they were 10 percent down instead of 20 percent down or they were first-time home buyers and they no way would they ever waive a home inspection now's the time for them to get back in there's a lot more inventory and we're definitely seeing um not just in our own company our own business but our, our colleagues are also telling us that their, their buyers are back in the market, they're successful, they're getting offers accepted. Um, and so it's a good thing for everybody involved. Um, what else? Uh, Bruce? No, I was gonna just agree with you on the, the point about the market right now. The, the, the market back in March and April 
was a great seller's market, like one of the best we'll ever see. It was phenomenal. Yeah. It's still a seller's market. But that great seller's market scared some buyers. There's no doubt about it. Um, and as I said earlier, I, I think of, I think of um, the buyers out on the market like a game of musical chairs. You know, when you stop the music, everybody grabs a house and there are people left over. And there are a lot of people left over who could not compete in that marketplace. Yeah. They're still very good buyers. They're still very qualified. They're still willing to pay, you know, the right prices and over. They're still willing to, to waive inspections. They're still willing to do all of the right things that, that sellers are looking for. They just maybe were not the ones that could be in that crazy time in March. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely cooled off a little for sure. We're definitely seeing that um, throughout here in Sharon um, and the surrounding communities. Let but me I'm still you. seeing multiple offers on houses. You are. Absolutely. You are. Yep, for sure. For sure. Yep. And as a listing agent, I am too. I am too. Um, buyers are still out there. And you know what's interesting? What do you think is going to happen now with COVID and these, these, var these variants that are coming along? I know I'm having an event for my daughter in October, so I'm scared to death about it. But um, am, I, <laughs> I, am I invited? Um, yeah, 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 are invited. You might, we might have to order some masks, though. Um, but I do wonder about that. You know, one thing that's that prompted this huge seller's market that we're in right now was COVID, right? The city shut down. People wanted to have a backyard. They wanted to get out of apartment living. They wanted to get out of city living, and we saw just a craziness that combined and rates were low 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 right combine the low interest rates low inventory and people saying okay i can work from home now i i i want a bigger house that has a home office because i have to work from home now so everyone's requirements for the space that they were already occupying it changed right it changed dramatically so that fueled a lot of what was going on um what's going to happen now i mean i are we going to see like this other you know I just hope it doesn't get worse and we're not all stuck inside again. That's my I think opinion. it's still there, Di. I think the market's still in that same um, in the same perspective. I just think that instead of 10, 15 offers per home, you're gonna see, you know, single digit offers per home. I mean, I was just involved in a in a situation with a with a family where you know they they've been looking for quite a while to try and and upsize because they work from home. Yeah. But it just wasn't the right thing. Again, they the timing wasn't right. There were there were factors that that played in. There are still plenty of people like that in the market right now who are still adjusting to that new normal, the work from home normal where they need the space, etc. that um, that sellers are going to be able to take advantage of that um, of that pool of buyers still being out there. Absolutely, absolutely. We got a call the other day um, to list somebody's house. They're moving to Texas, and when I asked why yeah. Texas, they're like, "Well, the climate, and we work from home now, so we can go anywhere we want." And that is still happening. I mean, people's work situations have changed so dramatically that while they they might have thought it was temporary. Yeah. Their companies, everyone has pivoted and has they've allowed them to now, okay, you're home permanently. So now people are really are realizing, well, we don't have to, you know, stay here for another snowy winter. And there are plenty of companies out there that will uh, afford workers the opportunity to continue working from home if they like that. So we've seen situations where some companies are requiring people to go back to the office, requiring masks. And the worker bees are saying, no, thank you. There are six other companies out here that I can work from home for and I can be comfortable. So I don't see that changing dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and let me just say, staging, okay, when we stage a house, we don't add color to the bedroom by emptying the laundry basket onto the bed to make it look colorful, that's just not a good staging tip. I was just trying to be funny. That wasn't funny. <laughs> that was good, yeah. That wasn't that funny. That um, is decorating at our house though. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, yeah, yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. We can talk about picking up our daughter from camp tomorrow 
That has nothing to do with the seller series, but um, our daughter's been away for seven weeks, so we're pretty excited to go get her tomorrow. Um, but she's 13, so give me uh, next Thursday when we're on again. Um, you can ask me how that's going, and I'll be ready to send her back to camp probably. Well, thankfully, school starts soon. <laughs> so we, we only have a two-week transition. How amazing is it that school starts soon? Right. When does it start here? August 30th, August right? 30th, Monday, August 30th. It's just ridiculous. You know, it really is amazing that the summer has gone by, I think, as fast as it has. Um, we're already in what? April, May, June, I have to do it on my fingers. I'm terrible. We're in the third quarter, right? June, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We're in the middle of the third quarter of the year. Um, in, in real estate, we talk quarters, right? Um and typically the second quarter is incredibly busy for everybody. Um, and then we have a little bit of a tick up in the third quarter. Again, that September market. And then, you know, th listen, people always ask us, is it a bad time to sell in the winter? Um, but you know what? Houses sell every time of year. And if, it's that, if that's your circumstance that you have to sell in the winter, you sell in the winter. Um, one tip I always give people is if you're selling in the winter and you have a beautiful pool or really nice landscaping, get your photos done now because you'll regret it if you have to get them uh, done when everything is snow covered and not as pretty. So that's just one little tip I wanted to share. Um, other, other things about selling a house. We talked about staging. We talked about, let's talk a little bit about the process. Um, you know, people don't realize there's a, a lot of people are buying, they're buying new construction, um, they are building, they things are taking longer than expected. Um, so one problem we have with a lot of our sellers is they don't want to be homeless um, and they don't want to make an interim move, right? So timing is really, really important. And in a market like we have now, if we do our job right, we want to, we're going to sell it quickly, right? We want to sell it within the first 30 days, within the first two weeks even of when we hit the market, even the first weekend, right? In a market as hot as some of the markets we're in right now. So if that happens, if we were to put a house on the market today, today being August 11th, you're looking at probably August, September, an end of October closing date when you would have to be out of that house, right? That would probably be average. So, you know, keep that in mind if it's something where you want to be out before the winter, um, you have a few more months to get that accomplished if it's before the holidays and you want to be in your next location. Um, there are, we've seen, you know, here's the other interesting thing about a seller's market. Buyers get to really, um, uh, sellers, I should say, excuse me. Oh, by the way, where's my text? We, we, uh, I was offered a lifetime supply of um, Jersey Mike. Is that what it's called? Jersey Mike subs. Did you know that, Bruce? I did. So people are being very creative in offers these days. And this particular um, buyer had an in. They were affiliated with Jersey Mike's. Um, I won't give too many details, but part of the offer that was put forth was a lifetime supply of Jersey Mike subs. So I wanted to make it very clear um, when I presented that offer to my sellers, um, whether or not that offer, I did call the agent to confirm, was that a lifetime supply for me or was that a lifetime, <laughs> lifetime supply for um, for my sellers. And Bruce, I don't eat Jersey Mike subs, so I I'm just asking really for you, because um, I know you just went to that place in Walpole and really liked it, right? It, it literally just came up to the Boston area. And so, what is so great about it? Is it like a subway? What is it? It it's Sure, it's like a subway. Um, Subway's known for, for baking their own bread, but Jersey Mike's, what they do is while you order your sub, they're they're slicing it at, like on a deli slicer oh, at the time. So that's right. So the, that's right. The meats are very very fresh. Um, that part's really cool. Uh, you know, it's just it's it's another decent concept. I, I asked him, and you're absolutely right because because I was I went in there and it was really crowded, and I literally just went in to get a drink, and 
I said, what's the concept? And, and he explained that the concept is it's like your old fashioned deli um, where they're slicing the meat and it's fresh, but it is on a franchise level. So that's exactly they are it. coming to Boston. They're going to be opening north of Boston. Yep. Um, there's one here in Walpole, which is right next to Sharon. Um, and uh, there's yeah, one in Dedham. So, yeah, they're coming up. My, so, my, my one mistake, the first time I ever went in, because I, I like an Italian sub, I ordered an Italian sub the way they, they make it. And it, it, can we tie this back into sellers somehow? Somehow. somehow. And it, it just, it dripped all over me. And I'm like, I don't like that. So now I had to learn how do I order what to order. You know, I would just think you just made me think of something. What do people do when they're selling and they have pets? As my pet is making a mess of my house. What do they do? That, so there was something else that um, this was a line that I used and it still remains true. If a buyer can smell it, I can't sell it, <laughs> right? There is nothing worse than buyers walking into a house and saying, what's Cooking that smells. smell? Things like that, <laughs> what's yeah. What's that smell? Now listen, it's going to be a problem years to come because everyone during COVID, not everyone, but a lot of people got pets, right? Everyone needed to get what they call the COVID no tie, Tim Macy. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Everyone had to get a puppy over COVID. I got one post COVID, so I'm guilty, but he's not really a COVID puppy. Can maybe kind of sort of. But everything in a house cannot smell. I even tell my sellers, don't cook anything. You need to eat out while we're putting your house on the market because inevitably they're going to make like this big fish dinner. Um, I remember, this is a funny story. I remember selling a house in Newton about you know, four years ago and the sellers were meticulous, meticulous. They decided to clean their oven the night before we were having an open house, right? So they put on, I guess the self cleaning tool or whatever. Well, they hadn't done it in a while. It smelled like smoke or cleaning material or something. The next day at that open house, everyone walked through that open house, went, do smokers live here? Oh my gosh, I was horrified, horrified. They never smoked a day in their life, these guys. And yet that happened because they tried to be really good and meticulous and clean their oven before the open house, but it backfired. So don't cook anything, don't burn anything um, before an open house. You are required to go out to eat for the week before we put the house on the market. Or make cookies. Or bake bread or bake cookies or bake something that's like smells really pretty. Because realtors like cookies at open houses. Yeah. Or at least this one does. Yeah. Well, let, speak, speaking of food, right? We're, we, Bruce, when, when, <laughs> where did we used to go for lunch a few years ago? Do you remember that? <laughs> open houses? Oh. Yeah, back when back when that was a thing. Yeah, we would when, we would back, shop the market for the best the best open house lunch for the so broker back, tour. Right, back when there were open houses, um, we would do. There was something called broker tours typically, and then Sharon again. They've stopped because of COVID, but I, they're starting to come back a little. But in Newton, there were broker open houses, and Needham broker open houses, and Sharon there's a broker, and it's a tour. Right? And we go from house to house on the new listings and the agents are to preview the new listings so they can talk about them to their buyers. And it's another way that listing agents market their properties. Well, whether or not Bruce and I had a client in Newton for a particular house, we didn't care. We just kind of scrolled through and said, oh, look at honey, they're having sushi. <laughs> so true. We had some really good lunches at some of those open houses, right? So true. Yep. Um, yeah, that's pretty funny. That's pathetic, but that's true. That's true. Someone suggested baking a spice cake. That's a good idea. Thank you, Adam. Where did Adam write that? In the comments. Oh, too much air freshener. That's a good one. Let's 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 show this comment. Hey, Tim Macy. Tim says, "What about having too much air freshener?" Well, honestly, that's just as bad as, as something smelling really bad. I totally agree. You know, a lot of our clients, we go into a house and they're burning candles on the kitchen counter. And, you know, part of that is, okay, what are they trying to hide? Does it smell mildewy in here? Is there a pad? Are they covering it up? 
So um, yeah, I would argue don't use air freshener and don't burn candles. I would just open windows and just have a nice, fresh, clean smell. So yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, what else do we want to talk about today, Bruce? What else you got? Any questions from the from the peanut gallery? Post some questions for us. Let's see what we have going on here. Um, I know that we have some uh, some people on on line watching us who have sold multiple times. Is that right? And what I'd like to know, you know, here's the other thing too, is what is the we have to ask sellers, what is the hardest part about selling your house? Or what's the scariest part? That's what I want to know, right? What would, would, would people who have sold before or are planning on selling, what's been the hole in the process for you? What have you not liked about it? Or what scared you and then you weren't scared anymore, right? Post some of those, post some of those comments because I think that would be really interesting um we're always trying to improve what we do and i think that um what we have found bruce and i have found is that once we talk to sellers and they know the process and they have someone that they trust they kind of take a a deep breath they might not have a place to go yet right but they feel like they've got someone in their corner rooting for them that they can call and say you know what, should I leave that table? I was thinking of selling it. I'm not going to bring it to my new place or whatever. And they just have someone to throw ideas off of. Would you agree? Yeah, but I also think that that they need to know that they're not in it alone. That that when they think something's daunting to be done, it's not that big a deal. Just like you said earlier, when buyers walk in and say, oh, there's carpet, but there's hardwood under there. Oh, my God, that's a big deal. It's not a big deal. Sellers the same way. I need to declutter my house. Great. We've got people who can help you do that. I need to get a dumpster. Got people who can do that. I need to paint a room. We've got people who can do that. Like we've got a whole and list I, of and I, I always find it's not as expensive as as they think it is either, right? It's not no. as pricey. As we know, we we're not going to ask a client to invest X if they're not going to get X plus. Yeah, yeah. What would you say, Bruce, in bringing buyers for sellers? What's the what are the Let's try to think of what are the three biggest things that sellers should do from a from a systems perspective, not not from a prettying, right? We talked a lot about that, about organizing the house, decluttering, making sure it's clean and staged and, and all of that stuff. But what about the systems? What about the stuff that um, you never pay attention to? I mean, we never pay attention to in our house, right? like the AC or heating, roof, attic, those, all those things. Those were, your, those were your best three. But honestly, go up into your attic and check and see if there's mold in it. How do they know? How Take do a picture. Know? Take a picture and ask us. Ask us to go up. I mean, because on, honestly, that's one of the biggest things that we've had that come up with houses that have been meticulously maintained. They just don't know because maybe there's something that's causing it that is a simple, simple fix, which is usually the case. Right. There's so a simple well, fix. They've just ignored it because they don't go up to their attic. And let's talk about that. That, you know, that's not a common thing in other parts of the country. Right. right? I think it has something to do with the time of construction we have here in New England and the change in temperature. hundred um, um, percent. I'm not a builder, but I, talk to enough builders and contractors to know that a lot of houses that are built in the 50s, the way they do the rafters in the roof, the way the insulation is, the soffit vents, it oh, all has to do with air circulation. And if you don't have good air circulation in your attic, you get what most home inspectors, they won't say mold because they may not be mold experts, but they'll say a black substance that appears that it could be mold. Mold-like substance. A mold-like substance. And all it is, what is it? It's like, you know, we get it in our bathroom sometimes if you, you don't have a good vent venting out, right? It's moisture and it causes it and it gets on the wood. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some buyers that get really spooked by the word, right? 100%. Um, it, it's very, very common. And so to get ahead of that, I would suggest that sellers... He's, you're, Bruce, you're absolutely right. Go up to the attic, 
take a look, see what it looks like, and also make sure that, you know, ha- or call a contractor or a handyman. Make sure but your attic's well insulated. There's don't no- let the first time that you go into the attic be during a home inspection. <laughs> really. Right. I mean, it's... it's, it's your, kind of, what about your basement? What about the so, basement? So the basement, so what I was going to... Uh, yes, you hit the keys, right? You know, make, make sure I'm that you're... Right. Of course. Make sure your heating and air conditioning systems are are, are updated. Um, you know, they should be updated whatever periodic years that is. Is it 20 years? Is it 30 years? Compressors outside. Um, typically, what we hear is you're not supposed to cover them, leave them exposed. But the number one thing that always comes up in an inspection is the water heater is beyond its economic life. And that's an easy one to just proactively replace after 10 years. What, the water heater. The water heater. Right. Right. And 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 it 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 it's another one of those things as a seller, I'm on top of things, I'm keeping things neat and clean. That's my number one thing though. When I'm bringing buyers into a house, yeah. if a house is organized, I don't just mean cleaned up and presented for the open house, but if it's well organized, you can tell a lot about the type of seller that you're buying from that they've taken care of their house. And in those cases, I don't care what the age of the systems is because I know they've maintained them forever. And I know that they've done the routine maintenance they're supposed to do because they're meticulous. So buy from an OCD seller. That's the best thing to be as a seller is OCD. Okay, so for you sellers out there, if you're not OCD, pretend you are Uh and start getting your house ready so that buyer agents like Bruce Go down to your basement and say, oh, my gosh, this is a total OCD seller. This house is probably really meticulous. There you go. There's and as a buyer, you'll pay for that. You will pay for that. You will pay extra for that. There's no That's doubt about because it. Because you know it's well-maintained. Because you know it's well-maintained. You know it's well-maintained. So if you walked into, you know, Joe Schmo doesn't take care of his stuff house, that has a 15 year old furnace and has never serviced it, but you walk into meticulous person's house that's 30 years old, but service tags has maintained it every day, keeps it neat and clean stuff. That 15 year difference in in, uh, age makes no difference because of the way that it's been maintained. Yep. So listen, you know, we've been joking a lot and talking about, you know, some fluffy things like, like, you know, decorating and painting and things like that. But in all seriousness, there's an awful lot of emotion involved um, in selling homes. And I can tell you that over the past few years, um, probably some of the most, um, some of the proudest moments of my career have been um, knowing that I've helped sellers who have either experienced a death in their family. Um, They have had to move to assisted living. Um, um, They've been children and their parents have passed away and they've had to sell the family home. Um, And honestly, like knowing that we're bringing such value to those sellers and it's such a time that I can't even tell you where we, we, we're not real estate agents at that moment. I am a friend, a confidant, um, um, a therapist, just a, a sounding board really. And it's like anything, we're just really being someone there to, to, to help them get through and get on to their next stage. And it's, it's hard. It's just hard. It's very emotional. And um, I can tell you that, you know, I've been in tears with some sellers just sitting there listening to their stories of why they're selling or why they're moving. And nothing makes me happier than knowing that, don't worry, I got your back. You know what I mean? And seeing sort of this sigh of relief on their face that is, um, that they're, they're just like, thank you, you know? You know, I, I think, you know, sometimes it's, you know, if God forbid you're sick and you find a doctor that you really trust and you know he's going to help you and you're going to listen to his advice, it's, it's kind of the same way. It's not life or death like a doctor and an illness, but it is, um, it is getting somebody to move on to the next step. Sometimes there's a lot of paralysis where they, they know it's daunting. 
Um, and they don't even want to make that first phone call. So a lot of times we'll go to the, we'll find those people because of a referral um, and people know that they'll be well taken care of and um, that, we, you know, we deal with people with, you know, with warmth, with humor, because um, we're human. I mean, everyone's human. There's a human element to all of this. It's just life is hard, right? Life is hard. Life is full of chapters and transitions and um, high moments, good moments, happy moments, and very, very sad moments and, and sad times. So um, that that's a big piece of, um, of what we do. And it's... Um, and, and, when it, and when it's done, you know, it's it's very, very satisfying. And perhaps for, you know, the seller, it's uh, while it begins emotional and then it ends up, you, can't, you have to stop. It's um, I don't know. I just wanted to I just wanted to mention that, that it's very it's not um, on the buy side, Bruce, you have sometimes a much happier job than I do. Right. It's always and a happy job. People that are buying are excited. It's right? always a happy job. I'm, I'm selling, helping. Selling sometimes they're not as happy. Right. right. I mean, I mean, if they're going to their next place and it's because they're selling and buying a bigger house or if they're selling and moving because of a promotion or a new job. But a lot of times people are selling for very different reasons. Um, right. They're not all they're not all the happy next chapter. No, no. But most people are not, I would say, it, it, it's less on the buy side, right? No, it's less no on the buy side, like 99% of the time, it's a happy experience because it's their first house. It's an upsize in a house. It's moving to a new town that that they've just, you know, they've just established themselves. I mean, I deal with a lot of first-time buyers. That's as exciting as it gets, you know, um, yeah. to, to have, you know, kids that could be my kids, you know, buying a house and needing advice and and you know that that i take on a, a paternal role in those but you're right i mean it's on the buy side it's definitely a happy experience you, you don't look old enough to take on a paternal role that, I, I was kidding i'm not okay we're back to rocky because he's he's barking um i could never sell a house with this puppy he's very cute though isn't he isn't he very cute he's very cute there are a lot of work Bruce, thank you for staying married to me, even though I got us a, a second dog. It's not long. Um, all right. So we're going to come back next Thursday. Um, let's end this on an, on an upbeat note. We have a few minutes left. If there are any questions, post them. Um, we're going to come back next week. I think we're going to have next week, we're going to bring on another guest. We're also going to talk about some different areas that our sellers are moving to. Um, we have a lot of snowbirds as clients. They're going to places, exciting, warm places like North Carolina. They're moving to Florida. They're moving to places like Naples um, and other communities. And we're going to we'll, we'll try to bring some information um, post comments. Once you see this, if you're not on live and you watch this and repeat, Give us some comments about um, areas you might be interested in um, that you might be thinking you want to downsize to or move when you're moving out of the New England area um, and you need a connection in a different area. We'll, we'll, we'll try to be that resource and bring some more information on that. Um, um, we, we are going to talk to our home inspector, right? Um, and maybe we'll bring our stager on. And um, so we have lots of fun things that we can talk about um, and bring on to keep providing value in, uh, in this realm. All right. Um, and we'll, we'll try to keep coming and keep everybody apprised of what's going on in the market. Because again, with this, with COVID in the news every week, things are changing, right? Um, we, we just got word that uh, masks are required um, in, in, in one of our, in the religious institutions that we're going to, um, we have to wear masks now again when we're going into the building. Um, so that's something new that we never thought, we didn't think it would come back this quickly, but um, things are changing. So, um, and that will affect the real estate market. Um, I also find myself now going on appointments and while I was, I'm fully vaccinated, right? So we were walking in a house is going, hi, nice to meet you. I've been shaking hands, I've been smiling no mask, flossing my teeth. Now all of a sudden I'm walking up to doors and I actually have a mask in my hand 
and I'm offering to put that mask on to go into people's homes because um, I think people are now more sensitive about it. So, yeah, that's it. Bruce, any last thoughts before we end the broadcast tonight? Um, no, I don't think so. All right. All right. I think you covered a lot. And uh, everybody that owns a house right now should sell it. And everybody <laughs> should then buy another house. To keep you busy, right? Exactly. To keep you busy. Um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again, not Wednesday, but next Thursday. Have a great week. And it's supposed to be a hot one tomorrow. So uh, stay cool if you can. All right? I may have a cold beer or two. Bye, everyone. <laughs>